The World Expo is a place where people can meet, uh, where people can learn, and where people can be entertained. The first World Expo took place in, in London in 1851, when the Crystal Palace was built. And uh, through the years, uh, the World Expos have had uh, around 800 million visitors. It's a, it's a very uh, big arrangement, but they have changed through the years from uh, showing innovations uh, in, the, in the beginning and now we uh, try to show uh, uh, solutions on environmental and, and human problems. So the change you can see through the years. What is the, the aim of the, the, the World Expo in general? Well, in general, um, to educate, to be innovative, and to entertain. But very much a meeting place. People can meet, they can talk uh, over barriers of uh, uh, culture or political... Uh, uh, movements, so um, a place where you can learn to understand more than you did before. And I understand it's getting increasingly popular nowadays. Well, uh, the last year uh, the expo in Shanghai had uh, 73 million visitors. Uh, the area was uh, a little bit bigger than Central Park in New York and uh, it uh, will be a record for many years to come. But as long as you have uh, countries and cities uh, wanting to arrange a World Expo, and as long as you have participants, there is a market for World Expos. But I'm sure they will change even, even uh, further on. I mean, what are the... What can you achieve with the World Expo? Or can you achieve some, some real changes? Or is it just the uh, place where you meet? Well, uh, that depends on, on what view you have on it. I mean, uh, the World Expo, for example, for Sweden, is uh, a matter for the Minister of Trade. We see it as a platform of uh, increasing the Swedish company's network in the country uh, to meet uh, business partners, to arrange, to uh, show what they can. And uh, we use the Swedish Pavilion as a platform for making business. And business is also uh, the increasing number of tourists coming to Sweden. So we want to show Sweden as a nice and good place to live in, and to visit, and to make business in, and to eat food in. We want Sweden, the image of Sweden, uh, should be improved by our presence in the World Expo. Do you have some example of any business who, who had struck a major deal after a World Expo? Uh, not really. Uh, um, but I think the, the presence in a World Expo and meeting all the, the present or future partners in the business life uh, is uh, it's a long-term activity. You cannot just be in the Expo during six months and then believe that this is going to change my company. It takes a longer time than that. But it is a part of the long, the long road to being successful in, in this country. Um, I know that some companies actually signed documents in the Swedish pavilion in Shanghai last year. But this is uh, exceptions, I would say. In the, we got some economical crisis in the world, or economical turbulence in the world now. Do you see that uh, why is that uh, participating in or hosting a World Expo a worthy investment for a country? 
I think you can compare it with the Olympic Games. It is uh, a kind of entertainment for, uh, for example, for the, the average Chinese. He wants to go to the uh, expo to see what uh, all the countries are showing uh, regarding the theme, better city, better life. They are interested. It's also a lot of entertainment. Of course, music, dancing, theater, and, and a lot of fun. It's kind of a, the audience is uh, very much like the uh, Disney World audience. People go there to entertain themselves for a day. The business part is, is mostly amongst businessmen, and they are invited to the different pavilions. For example, to the Swedish pavilion for a seminar or a conference uh, that a Swedish company is arranging, organizing, to show their capability of solving problems in the environmental sector, for example, in building houses or or doing what we are good at. You are also have initiated a, a, a new path in the World Expo um, history, and um, you're gonna try to put um, an exhibition online called V Expo. Can you tell us a bit about what that is and, and what your goal are? Yeah, it, it started with uh, 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 the aim of trying to make the Expo. Uh, an international exhibition on the internet to make it more democratic. Open 24 hours a day, the year around, at no cost. You can visit this expo without traveling, paying an entrance fee, paying a hotel for eating uh, out. Um, this is something that we want to have ongoing changing uh, from time to time, improving the different pavilions and, and uh, try to be as innovative as possible. Use uh, the latest technology but still make it open to everyone, which is very important. We want to make it uh, available on, on the uh, smartphones, in the computers, uh, iPads, televisions, uh, so you can use uh, any uh, new media uh, you want. And uh, we have uh, come so far that we are now struggling with uh, the Swedish pavilion, which would be the first pavilion on this uh, uh, virtual expo. Uh, it would be a, a, a big uh, project and it has never been done before. So, of course, we have a lot of problems. But we have a strong team uh, here in Stockholm working on this, and, and we have a very strong confidence. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the, the experience that the, the, the visitor will have when someone enters the, the, the expo? Well, you, uh, you will enter the expo, uh, the expo area uh, will be um, a globe, but on the inside of a globe. So we have a limited expo area, and when you enter it, you can see the whole area from every point within the square. You can choose to transport yourself to uh, uh, a special pavilion or you can just walk in the area. Uh, in this area you will see uh, lakes, uh, forests and fields, uh, roads of course uh, that you work, walk on and, and then you can enter pavilions and entering the pavilion that's where we uh, our responsibility ends because every national pavilion will be built by the country in question. Okay. And 
we all know that the the uh, the World Expo isn't a, a political forum, but since the World Expo in 2012 is taking place in South Korea, what would be the political message to region if if there is any? Well, uh, what is politics and what is not? The theme of the Expo in South Korea is uh, living ocean and coast, which is an environmental theme, uh, we want to keep the rivers and the sea clean so we can use it, uh, live in it and, and still have it. No pollution, uh, I would say this is a kind of uh, political uh, theme because it's not enough if Korea cleans the water outside their border because the pollution in the sea doesn't feel any borders or limits. Uh, they transport the, the pollution to, to the whole sea. So we have to unite. This is a little bit about what the theme is uh, thinking of. I, I mean, you, uh, you have to show uh, different methods of cleaning the sea. Uh, and spread these new methods, the new technology, to other countries so we can gather together and try to do something about the sea in, in a bigger group. We have to do that. And, and Sweden has a long coast, so the theme is interesting for Sweden too. Uh, and, and, um, but Sweden has not decided yet whether to participate or not. So we will see about that. But everything is politics. And uh, it's not only uh, uh, two prime ministers uh, quarreling about something. Uh, in a democratic country, uh, all citizens have a responsibility for, for the politics, for the environmental protection, for schools, hospitals through the elections. So uh, I would say um, this is a political theme, yes. Many of our listeners come from the from organization and the civil society. And then uh, I got some questions around, can the civil society, for example, smaller NGOs participate in the World Expo? Is it only for, for governments and, and, and large global institutions? There are many examples of, of uh, participation from, from uh, non-governmental organizations in, in world experts. And I think the um, uh, development is uh, uh, right now that we want even more organizations to participate. I mean, when we are talking about the clean sea, there are a number of uh, NGOs that want to have word in the debate, in the discussion, and they are welcome to do so. They can also contact their uh, national pavilions, try to get in through there with uh, some interesting themes for for conference or something, but there there is a room for NGOs in the world experts, and I think it's a very uh, important that they are participating. What is your vision for the Expo in the, in the coming 10 years? I want the Expo to be a, a kind of a melting pot for uh, views from different kind, parts of the world, from different religions, from different cultures. Uh, in a way that makes us understand each other in a better way. I have actually a, a, a belief that uh, the World Expos actually could change the world. Step by step, bit by bit. If you, uh, as a Protestant, uh, talk to a Muslim for half an hour, you will probably learn something. And all knowledge you get is a step forward to a better understanding. 
but still it's a lot of money and it's very much business oriented but I still have this feeling I might be naive but uh, let me be that